Hi, this is Raphael Chacon, Professor of Art History and Criticism at the University of Montana. And I am coming to you with my next installment in the series on Roman and early Christian art. We are in our eighth lecture. And today we return to the sequence in which we discuss the Roman emperors. And we are gonna be dealing with a very important emperor by the name of Trajan. So without much further ado, let's go back into our PowerPoint presentations and let me share the screen and we will begin discussing Trajan. So Marcus Ulpius Trianus, um, born in the year 52 near the town of Italica, which is um, in, uh, near Seville, Spain today. And uh, he's a very interesting emperor that, uh, that followed the Flavian dynasty. Um, he was actually adopted by the emperor Nerva, and that is his claim to, uh, to that lineage, although he's not technically considered a Flavian, given the fact that he was born in Spain and not in Rome proper. And in some ways that makes him a significant emperor in its own right, because there was uh, uh, an idea that was current in Rome that the city itself was a place of malevolent influences. And, um, and that following the, the now almost a century of, of uh, bad rule and problems with, uh, with rulership, there was the notion that in fact, maybe it was important for the Roman patricians to seek, uh, to seek the next emperor outside of the orbit of uh, Rome's political circles and dynastic circles. And so in fact, he is the first emperor to be born in the provinces. And much like today, we, uh, we talk about, we use the expression drain the swamp, and we think of our capital cities as places of corruption and chicanery and all kinds of machinations uh, in the maintenance of power. I think that was also true in ancient Rome. There was the notion that in fact, that the, the, the good air um, was out there in the provinces and that the good Roman stock could be actually found out there. And that is indeed where the next um, Roman emperor came from. Uh, he came from Spain, so in the far western provinces of the Roman Empire. Uh, he was a military man, a soldier who rose through the ranks and he served both in Syria and in Spain. And uh, we know that in the year 89, he put down an insurrection against the Emperor Domitian. So he earned his chops uh, by serving the military and the state. Uh, he was married to a very influential woman by the name of Plotina or Plotina, uh, and then he uh, again was adopted by Nerva, Nerva in the year 92, 97, excuse me, and then upon Nerva's death in 98, he was elected emperor, uh, taking the title Imperator Caesar Nerva Trianus Augustus. Uh, he ruled from 98 to 117, so he had a very long and impressive rule. Two major uh, uh, military uh, coups to his, uh, to his credit, that is uh, the wars in Dacia or Dacia and Parthia, which is now uh, predominantly Iran today. And then he died in the year 117, as I just mentioned. There are a number of significant images of him. He's a very recognizable emperor um, from the portraiture that we do have. Uh, this is a gold coin, an aureus with the image of uh, of the young Trajan. And then on the verso of that coin, we see an image of him with Nerva. So there is that his adopted father and his predecessor emperor. Uh, so Nerva on the right and, uh, and tri uh, Trajan Trianus on the left. Uh, Trajan also had the distinct um, reputation of having taken the Roman Empire to its farthest extent. That is that it is geographically and perhaps even militarily at its most powerful during his reign. Uh, and here you see a wonderful map that shows you all of the Roman provinces. In the center of the screen is um, uh, the number 22 in a sort of darkish gray area there or bluish gray area. And that is Dacia and that is where, um, where he uh, earned his reputation as a great general and um, and his greatest conquest. So the expansion of the Roman Empire into Dacia above the Black Sea. And then uh, off on the right in this tan color here, almost an orangish color, is the Parthian Empire, which he also brought into the Roman, uh, the Roman Empire. And that conquest, of course, is his most significant one, 
uh, and it, is, it, it took the Roman Empire into the farthest uh, geographical extent, almost rivaling the Alexandrian Empire, the Am Empire of Alexander the Great, the, the Hellenic, uh, Hellenistic king. Um, and it's arguable that Rome's power was much more influential, Rome's empire was much more influential even than Alexander the Great's, certainly in terms of its long lasting um, impact on the development of the Mediterranean basin in Western Europe, certainly Rome's uh, legal system, its military institutions, um, those sort of, uh, those elements of the Roman state that persisted well into the Middle Ages were uh, much more influential than uh, Alexander the Great's uh, conquests. Um, but again, that's, that's a question left, better left to, uh, to, um, to uh, the pol political theorists and political historians who can best uh, make the judgments between those two empires. Uh, it was, of course, the, the desire of Roman emperors to succeed and to advance their empire well beyond uh, Alexander, the extent of Alexander the Great's empire. And certainly, Trajan took the empire, Rome took the empire um, farther west and farther north than anyone had uh, conceived even in the times of Alexander. Okay, so here's another map that shows us the extent of that, and, it, uh, and it's a much more generic image of the regions ruled by the Roman Empire at the time of Trajan. And another one, uh, a similar one here, we can actually see Dacia, again, in the, the heart, at the center of um, north of the Balkans and north of, of modern day Greece, uh, et cetera, where the Dacia, uh, Dacia, ancient Dacia, Dacia used to, uh, used to be. And then of course the Parthian Empire in the far Eastern um, uh, part of this, uh, of this map. Okay, and here is a wonderful painting. This is a French painting. Uh, again, a later uh, romanticization, if you will, of the rule of Trajan, who was considered a good emperor, a beneficent figure in, uh, in Roman uh, history. Uh, and then likewise, portraits of him. And here is a typical uh, bus portrait of him on the left and a coin with his uh, wife, Plotina, uh, the impressive um, woman that she was. Uh, here's another wonderful bus portrait of Trajan. This one is in the Kunsthistorisches Museum in, uh, in, in Vienna. And again, it's a likeness that is sort of, um, is, is typical and easily recognizable as a portrait of the, uh, the Spanish emperor. The first foreigner, if you will, to sit on the Spanish throne, although he was a Roman, uh, just happened to be born in the Roman province of Hispania. Uh, again, another uh, bust portrait, this one in the Louvre, uh, on the image on the left without its, um, its nose. Uh, it's originally, it was found without a, with a broken nose, and then on the right with the nose repaired. In fact, there's an interesting anecdote about the word sincere in English. It comes from the Latin uh, uh, sincera, which means with wax, and it refers to the, the Roman custom of repairing broken noses or broken sculptures or fingers, that sort of thing, with, uh, with, waxes, uh, with wax uh, prosthetic de uh, devices. So uh, our word to be sincere is to be without wax, so to be without uh, a false, uh, false uh, a part. Okay, here's another beautiful portrait of a younger Trajan, and this one is in the British Museum in London. And likewise, this one is in Munich in the famous Glyptotech, uh, which has a fabulous Roman collection of sculptures. This is Trajan wearing a civic crown, the laurel, uh, the laurel crown, uh, as well as a sword belt around his shoulder and the aegis of Jupiter uh, here on his uh, left shoulder. And this very impressive uh, portrait of him as a general with, in full military uh, wear, it was found in Xanctin, uh, the, uh, the German city of Zankton up in, uh, in Westphalia. Uh, so in, uh, far in the Northern uh, territories of the German empire, uh, the city of Zankton, which takes its name from the Latin Sanctus. Um, so a, um, an impressive sculpture, full length sculpture of the emperor Trajan. And this wonderful coin here, um, labels him as Optimo Principi, or the, uh, the, the, first, uh, the first among equals, the first prince, if you will. And on the, on the verso of the coin, we have an image of the Circus Maximus. So um, again, one of the kind of celebratory coins that were issued by the Roman state under the rule of Emperor Trajan, the most powerful and popular Trajan. 
And again, here is an image of the empire, and we're going to focus now on his, uh, his exploits in Dacia. And particularly, we're going to focus on, 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 a, on a very important monument that records his, uh, his, his exploits in that part of the empire and the battles that it took for him to, um, to conquer that region. So here is the, uh, the, uh, a map of ancient Dacia with its uh, a couple of uh, major cities, Ulpia being the most important one of them all in this province. And, um, and then I want to show you now a couple of monuments in Rome that are related to his, his battles and his triumphs um, in, um, in the north. This is the famous Arch of Constantine. So this is a much later monument. As you can see from that date, it's 313 um, in the Common Era or AD. And the monument itself is a pastiche. It's in fact a, a compilation uh, that was built during the time of Constantine, uh, the last emperor to rule in Rome proper and uh, in the city of Rome proper. And it is, uh, it's, a co it's compiled, it's put together with reliefs that come from earlier monuments, some of which we know that the sources and for most of them we don't. Uh, and for example, here you can see that, there, uh, that, the, that the arch itself is devised, a couple of roundels that come from the period of ha Emperor Hadrian, Trajan's successor. The light green uh, uh, images here that you see, these pilasters, come from the time of Trajan. The yellow ones from the rule of Marcus Aurelius. And the green ones from actually from 313 or the time of Constantine uh, himself. So a very interesting uh, monument. Most people see this as, as, as coming from the age of Constantine, but it's actually a pastiche uh, with uh, reliefs from other, other previous monuments. There are some impressive uh, elements here that come from the time of Trajan and actually that, that celebrate the rule of Trajan. Uh, for example, the reliefs that you see here at the top and those pilasters that I just showed you actually date from the time of, uh, and we don't know precisely what monument they came from. They could have come from another arch. Uh, they could have come from any, any kind of monument uh, dedicated to, um, to the emperor Trajan, the first century uh, emperor Trajan. Uh, here, for example, are these figures that you see in front of the pilasters. These are actually bound prisoners, and some of them are actually wearing uh, the clothes of the enemies, the Dacians themselves. So these come from the time of Trajan and, and probably from some monument that celebrated Trajan's triumph against the Dacians. This is a wonderful uh, relief known as the Great Trajanic uh, Relief. Uh, and here we see uh, he's being crowned by a goddess, a uh, winged victory. And here is the emperor himself in full military garb with his soldiers behind him uh, in the, the, the Dacian Wars. Now, Trajan's greatest contribution to the, the Roman uh, cityscape was a forum. And remember that we had talked about how the Roman Forum was down here and that it climaxes in the Capitoline Hill and where the, the very important temples and governmental buildings were located. The Forum itself, the original Roman Forum was an open space that slowly will begin to fill in with temples and monuments and, and even some palaces. Uh, but that the most important space of the Via Sacra continued through it. And adjacent to it, we know that Julius Caesar built a forum, an open space, colonnaded space with a temple, and then Augustus, his heir, will build his forum next to that. And then, um, excuse me, I advanced a little too quickly here, and then next to that we have known as the Forum Transitorium, the Forum of Nerva. So three imperial fora that, pre uh, that predate Trajan's. But the greatest of these uh, imperial fora is the one that Trajan will add to it. And this is the enormous complex that you see here. It has at its heart an enormous open space, a colonnaded space, which is of course the, the, the pattern, the traditional pattern that we see parallel, by the way, to the forum of Julius Caesar. So in, uh, in, in perpendicular to the forum of Augustus. So here you see you would actually enter, you could enter the forum of Trajan from the forum of Caesar and from the forum of Augustus, because even though they're on different axes. That, uh, that colonnaded space had two excedra, excedra, so these large semicircular spaces both on the north and south, or the northeast, excuse me, and southwestern sides of the Forum of Trajan. And then there was an enormous basilica at the end of that forum. 
but that wasn't it. In addition to the basilica that you can see here, this massive, massive structure, much uh, larger than any other earlier uh, a basilica on the Roman Forum or adjacent to the Roman Forum, uh, and then beyond that, there was in fact a major monument, and this is the one that I want to discuss shortly, a, a large column celebrating the victories of the Emperor Trajan. And then there was a temple to the divine uh, Traj Trajan beyond the basilica. So it was a very impressive complex. And then there's more. In addition to the forum itself, there is an entire commercial district that was developed up here and those were also, and it's known as here in Latin, Mercati Traiane, Traiane, so the, the markets of Trajan. And that is a, a, it's entirely a commercial space, a kind of shopping mall, if you will, adjacent up the hillside of the Quirinal Hill, um, that um, uh, just very near the Sabura, this neighborhood uh, to the north and east of the Forum. And um, that is adjacent to the, the Forum of Trajan. So we'll look at all these spaces here in a second. And again, let me show you where you are in the model. So this is the Colosseum, the Flavin Amphitheater with the Via Sacra wending its way uh, north and east to the Capitoline Hill. And then here are the Imperial Fora, so the Forum of Caesar, the Forum of Augustus, the Forum of Nerva, and then immediately uh, to the northeast, the Forum of Trajan, the very impressive and large uh, civic space that he created for, uh, for the city. So here's again a detail of that view with the, uh, the Forum of Caesar, the Forum of Augustus, the Forum of Nerva, and here is the Forum of Trajan in its fullness with its twin excedrae off the colonnaded area, the Basilica Ulpia here in the middle, which by the way also had a library in it, and then the Temple of the Divine Trajan and its column right here uh, to the north. There were other smaller excedrae coming off the, uh, the Basilica Ulpia. Uh, and then here to the northeast, farther northeast up the, the, the hillside, we have the, the markets of Trajan, so the commercial space immediately adjacent. Okay, and there's another diagram showing you all of its details. The temple is number one, the column at number two, the libraries at three right here, opposite the, the, uh, the column, and then the basilica, um, the basilica Ulpia, and the forum uh, proper, the, the open space of the forum. And then there was more than likely an equestrian statue on a plinth of Trajan, in the uh, in the middle of the forum, and this is what's left of it. <laughs> Not a whole lot, unfortunately. These are the markets to the northeast, uh, the the kind of the back wall of the markets. We'll look at those a little bit more carefully. What you see are medieval towers and some medieval palaces that were built atop and adjacent and through this uh, the space. And not much is left of the forum itself. In fact, what we see here is not even. This is the level of the the floor level of the, uh, the forum, and that even has been excavated down below to reveal the more ancient um, foundations of the city and the neighborhood that stood here before it was erased um, and built over by Trajan uh, and his regime. So these are the columns from the Basilica Ulpia. So some of the, the, the fragments, if you will, of the, the great forum of Trajan. There are the pavement stones, so you can actually see the, the colored, uh, the very colored marbles of the, of the flooring, uh, and that is the actual floor of the, the forum, um, of Trajan's forum. And there are some details like cornices, fragments of the buildings, which were all destroyed after the sack of Rome, the multiple sacks of Rome, I should say. Beautiful work, of course, uh, but only in detail. And the markets of Trajan, ironically, are the, the commercial, uh, more popular spaces are ironically intact. Again, you have to ignore much of this construction that you see above it because these are all medieval and later things built on uh, atop those Roman ruins. In some cases, recycling a lot of the material from um, the building materials from the uh, the, Rome, uh, the forum itself. Uh, these, this is again the back wall of that. Uh, of the markets of Trajan. And again, remember that this is an excedra, one of the excedra of the, uh, of the forum 
uh, Trajan's Forum actually extended into this area and then behind that etc was the wall that you see here with the red brick and its, um, its, accent, uh, its accents, um, its uh, jams and, and portals uh, framed in, um, in marble. And here you see it in black and white in this earlier 20th century photograph. In this later imagery, these are the walls, the actual walls of, of Trajan's, um, Trajan's Forum. And some details of the markets and against aerial view of that uh, very impressive semicircular form. And you can actually walk through these structures today. This is open for tourists uh, for visits and you can actually see the old shops of this ancient shopping mall. And of course the ceilings here would have been covered in mosaics or reveted marbles. That's all gone now, but you can st still see the framing of these um, beautiful vaults and these impressive arches that, uh, uh, that form the roof of the markets of Trajan. And this is the alley behind it, just next to, uh, to the, uh, the Sabura neighborhood. So uh, again, there are more shops back here. This is the Via Viberatica, um, which uh, runs behind the, uh, the, the markets of Trajan. Now I wanna focus on this monument because this stood between the twin libraries on just, just adjacent to the Basilica Ulpia before you actually hit the temple of of the divine Trajan. And this is an, import, an important and a very impressive monument in Rome today. It is Trajan's column. Um, first of all, you should ignore the sculpture of St. Peter atop this. Presumably in, in antiquity, there was a statue of Emperor Hadrian up there. It has since been replaced by a modern statue of the, uh, the first Pope, that is the uh, Apostle Peter, the follower of Jesus Christ. And the monument in some ways has been spared because of its, um, because it was re rechristened as a Christian monument. But what this is, is a monument to the rule uh, of Trajan and particularly his battles in Dacia. This, um, this monument serves two functions. One is of course to recount the story of uh, Trajan in his uh, military uh, campaigns in Dacia, and it's like a film strip that spirals all the way from the, from the base to the top. And that film strip is a continuous story from the minute that the, the troops leave um, the city of Rome and the port of Ostia and sail uh, north and, and head up into the north to fight their battles, all the way to the victories at the very top. Of course, it's uh, illegible at that height. So, um, so we'll talk a little bit about, about that uh, shortly. The second function is that this is actually the resting place of the emperor and his family. Upon his death, his, his remains were interred in the base of this monument. So it's a very important uh, uh, monument. And I think it's preserved not just because of Trajan's reputation, uh, which was a good reputation, but also because it was an impressive and beautiful monument. It's a very large structure. Uh, and I think its beauty in some ways uh, argued for its, uh, its uh, preservation. Uh, here's an aureus, another gold coin that shows us the image of the Emperor Trajan on the left in profile. And then on the right, we see the, um, the monument of the column itself. Uh, notice, for example, that we have an image of the column and then the, uh, the, the Emperor on the top of it holding a staff. And then these twin eagles at the base and then the, 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 the entrance uh, chamber itself, which is also the pedestal or the plinth that holds up the column. And so just remember those details because we're gonna look at that shortly. So there's an image of the column on the left um, with its, its uh, sort of the, the story, the continuous narrative running along the, along the sides of it in low relief. And then on the right, the entry or to the chamber that contained um, Trajan and uh, Plotina's uh, remains and their family's remains. There is a doorway here and there is a spiral staircase inside it. And there was a time when in fact tourists could climb up to the balcony uh, at this level, at the very uppermost level of the, uh, the monument. Those eagles alluded to in the, uh, in the coin, in the, in, the, in the aureus, are actually right here. And you can see there are four of them at the corners of the, uh, of the base. And there are also dedicatory inscriptions and plaques on the sides of that base. 
And here's where the story begins. Uh, and here at the very base of it, you can see a series of ships, and this is the port of Ostia, and then a bunch of troops actually marching in, uh, in, uh, in rows as they depart the, uh, the, the as, as they walk through a city gate, uh, or as they exit through a city gate. And down here, you see this enormous figure rising out of the sea, this bearded male. This is a representation of the sea itself, or the gods, uh, or, or perhaps it is uh, Neptune or Poseidon himself uh, greeting or, or, or uh, waving goodbye to the troops as they head off uh, into battle. And then the story continues as you go around, it spirals around the, the column all the way to the very top. So there we see again the soldiers and their horses now. Uh, and, and Trajan, by the way, is all over the, the monument. You can actually see him uh, repeatedly uh, in the monument. And you can actually see him in the lowest, um, the lowest echelons of the, uh, of the, the spiral. Uh, and again, it's like a film strip, a uh, continuous film strip running along the side of the, uh, of the column itself. It really is a tour de force of uh, Roman carving. Um, and it's a, it, it, what's interesting about it is the way space is compressed, the way things are abbreviated, but then in spite of that, how rich it is in detail, particularly about the life of soldiers and, uh, and what it took for the Roman army to do its thing, to conquer, to war, to wage war. And that is truly what makes this a remarkable document of, of Roman uh, history. Um, its aesthetics, of course, are questionable and, and it's not perfect. I, you know, I think most historians would, would agree, but it goes a long way to, uh, to advance Roman uh, art and to, uh, and it's descriptive art, uh, it's narrative art. And so it is a, truly a remarkable uh, thing. Uh, he, uh, the, the, the entire column was cast in part, um, that is in modern times. And in Bucharest, Romania today, which is now modern Dacia, you can actually go to a museum that has these early 20th century casts of the column uh, of, of Trajan in Rome. And so this is a section, what you see here, and the reason it has that kind of funny shape is because remember this spiral is moving around the column. And so the sections are not perfect rectangles. They are in fact angled as they move on up. And for example, here is a scene showing us Trajan making a sacrifice. So he's pouring libations on an altar and the sacrificial bull is right here. So there's an attendant figure holding it, actually a number of attendant figures. His soldiers, his commanders standing around him waiting for the sacrifice to take place. So a sacrifice to the gods, thanking them for a victory, and we see Tro uh, Trajan in the capacity as priest and uh, military man uh, simultaneously. So this is one section of the casts of the column of Trajan in Bucharest. Here's another one uh, showing us, uh, I believe the soldiers here are uh, uh, felling trees to create a camp or actually to build a fire. So here what you're seeing is they're, they're locating logs uh, cutting, chopping down logs, cutting them, trimming them to, uh, to, to build an altar. And we see them in all kinds of activities, building camps, taking down camps, building bridges, etc. cetera. And, uh, and we also see them in their military configurations. For example, this is a, uh, is a detail of one of their particular uh, strategies. Uh, this is a, a kind of phalanx in which the soldiers covered themselves with their shields above their heads in a kind of turtle-like formation, the shields forming a, a carapace for a group of soldiers uh, marching into battle. It's also interesting here how the focus, there's a lot of attention placed on the enemy and particularly their clothing and their hairstyles and their beards, etc. They're shown as barbarians. They are different from the Romans. And so that the, the, the distinction is, is evident in, uh, in, these, uh, in these relief uh, sculptures. Um, lots and lots, again, lots of details. For example, here we see Roman soldiers in, uh, in profile carrying weapons and their weapons are quite distinctive. They're 
aspects of their uniforms are quite distinctive, their headgear, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and and the, the carvers not only did this for the Romans, but also did it for the, da the enemy Dacians as well. Uh, sometimes we see musical instruments, the kinds of drums and horns that were played, the percussive instruments that were used in battle um, as, as part of the, the, the psychological warfare that took place in, uh, in, in Roman warfare. There, again, lots of portraits of, of the Emperor Trajan, and he is uh, fairly easily recognizable. Here he is in, uh, in profile on the left. Um, and then, uh, and also other individuals from the military campaigns can be identified here as well. And lastly, I wanna show you some images, uh, and some of these are actually quite chilling, but for example, these are uh, Dacian women who are actually uh, torturing Roman soldiers, or uh, or or enemy soldiers now being uh, being tortured for their treachery? So um, so uh, scenes like this, you know, being tortured with uh, with uh, with torches, with fire, with knives, etc., or being bound, are ubiquitous in the column of Trajan. So I mentioned that there were two great military victories for him. One was the, the Dacian Wars here in the center of this map. And then there were the Eastern territories out here in, uh, in the Parthian Empire. And the Parthians were uh, an enemies of the state of Rome. And, um, and again, most of they, they reached into their territories, reached into modern day Mesopotamia and Armenia. Uh, a large part of modern Iran is in ancient, um, or uh, was ancient Parthia. And these are the territories that, that um, Trajan added to the, uh, the Roman Empire, adding to his reputation before his death in the year 117. Uh, here again is the westernmost boundaries of Parthia, right here in what is now Mesopotamia, what would be called Mesopotamia, the land between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. And we have some accounts of Trajan actually uh, sitting in the harbor here, looking up into these, uh, these two, the mouth of these two rivers and wondering what the Roman Empire was doing way out here in the Western uh, extremes of their, uh, of their uh, region. Okay, and on that note, we will end our presentation for today. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like uh, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And, uh, and we'll see you next when we discuss Trajan's successor, uh, the Emperor Hadrian. Thanks and take good care.